Well, guys, we're working on a 2170 new uh, Massey Ferguson big baler here. Putting some back plunger bearings and side roller plates and bearings. Um, well, I'll show you. Um, this one here, I noticed that the, there's a see the front bearing here. See the grease cap on it. And another thing you kind of noticed too when I looked at this and I seen the grease cap. See how it's been rubbing on here and that shouldn't do that. And that's an indication that the side clearance on the plunger for the bearings ain't set up right. See how the arm's bent up? That's not really right either. Um, but the grease cap was gone off this one. This one definitely and the roller is really worn out. I'll show you a little bit clearer. Well, I've got the old one off the other side out. And they haven't been changed in a long time. And they're fun to get out of there sometimes. But I don't know. The, the camera probably doesn't do justice here. Maybe you can see better at an angle. But it's worn out pretty bad. And I already had one of them that was already set up with the shaft and everything that I put in on the other side. over here and it what a difference that made huh I'm telling you what a difference that made but I got that one new in there and I got the new uh, the new side roller in there you're supposed to have a 16th inch clearance with the plunger all the way at the back so I'll have to I'll have to move it all the way to the back and then readjust it but we'll climb in here and I'll show you what you got to do to get them loose or pain in the ass I'm in the belly of the beast here. <clears throat> but you can see where the side roller. Freaking lights turn on here. Ah. Okay. So your side roller, see how it sits up there on the rail? It rides on the rail. And I don't know if somebody intentionally bent that up. I don't know why you would do that. Because it rides on the rail. These rails are removable as well. But you have to pull the plunger out to change them. And so I don't know why you would do that and bend that up like that. But maybe maybe because their rollers were all worn out and their plunger was sagging. And the roller was coming off the rail because the dumb bastards didn't change their roller out. I mean, because you wouldn't believe how much I had to lift that plunger up to get the new one in there. That's how much it was sagging. As you can see here. Yeah, I mean, same thing here. They got this one. I mean, yeah. I guarantee you, once we get this thing off of here, uh, it'll set down on there right. It's, it's just totally screwed up. So, anyway. Um... I gotta go get a wrench and hold the nut out there. But as you can see, I'll show you what else we're doing here. Oh, sorry, these are these are uh, these are hay dogs right here. These pieces here are hay dogs. They keep the bell in the chamber as the plunger's coming back. And there's plates, wear plates over the top of the hay dogs, which the hay dogs are worn out too. These are worn out. You see how these plates are peeling up? The wear plates? Those all got to be changed. This fucking ring camera. It'll tell me that there's somebody there, but it won't let me silence the thing. Mute the damn thing. <sighs> anyway. Um, so I got to get in here with the big Allen. And I got to get a wrench on the other side of it to hold it. And then I'll show you the... These are not fun to deal with. They really aren't. Especially if somebody's never changed them in a long time. And I'll show you that method. It's... Maybe somebody has a better method than that. But let's stick that on there. Shimmy my ass back out of here. 
once I get this back one and this other side roller, then I can start changing these hay dogs and wear plates. And I noticed one of my stuffer arm, or not stuffer arm, but one of the wear plates for the stuffer, it needs to be changed. This one on the right, it's worn out. And I'll show you what else we got to do here. We'll get this baler done today. That way they can use it. But, ow, ow, crack of my ass. Oh, that did not feel good. Hi, Bubba. What you know, Bubba? He's my big man. He's laying in the shade. You're not, you're no dummy, are you? Okay, we got a new Holland 340 high density baler that shit the bed here. And I'm going to tell you what, I don't know, man. There's only one way this usually happens, and that's because the operator stuck a shear bolt from the needle to plunger timing and didn't time it correctly and totally destroyed this baler. So let's climb under here and I'll show you. Okay. Uh, let's get the light out. As you can see, these are your needles. You see how the needles are all bent over? Every one of them is curled over on the end. See how they're bent over? They should follow the same arc. They're bent over. And I'll show you what else happened. Over here, this is the needle arm. This is the main arm. That's not supposed to be bent right there. See where the main needle arm is? See that big kink in it right there? That's not supposed to be like that. So, for some reason, they stuck a shear bolt in it because they broke a shear bolt and you have to get that to the right timing before you just stick another shear bolt in there. And all they did is they spun it around until the hole lined up and stuck the bolt in it and then they turned the PTO on and destroyed the baler. So we're gonna work on this one first because I mean, the least they can do is get their ass over here and clean it out where I can work on it. But they're all taking a day off, so. But I've got such a workload, I can't take a day off. I gotta get the balers fixed and then move on to other 15 projects. Here comes Josie. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. My friends. Okay, so. Uh, what I've been doing. I'll go ahead and pack this over there. I had a little. It's only a thousand PSI. A half a ton. But. It seems to work out okay sometimes. Between a little bit of heat with a rosebud. Now the service manual. Of course is just absolutely full of shit. They tell you after you get those two bolts out back there. Just put a bar behind it because it might be stuck and pull it out. Well, that doesn't work. Yeah, most of the time you're using heat and this porta power and air hammer. And it took me a few hours to get that other one out of there. The new one, I anesthetized it and slid it right in. But anyways, let's get this off. We got to get the side roller off. All right, guys, I got my porta power in there, and it'll pop out. Probably they pop out, but. I vibrated on it a little bit with the air hammer and it didn't really do to seem to do much. So now we're going to put heat on it.
I had to heat both sides to get it. And it took a long time, I mean three or four hours to get it out of there. And then I start vibrating on it. And then my foot pops out on me over there on the other side. heat that other side too I think I'll go ahead and I mean basically if once you get the rust broke loose on it that's the that's the that's the, once you just get it broke loose and then you're doing all right well guys I heated and beat it and pressed on it never could get the shaft to come out of this side the other side I tried to do exactly what I did on this side. I tried to get the nut off and just pull the roller and bearings off the shaft and leave the shaft in there. Well, the other side, I couldn't get the nut off. I mean, I, I was turning this in the bore. That's how tight it was. I even took the stake. These are staked right here. And I took the stake out and it still wouldn't come loose. So then that's the reason I pulled the shaft clear out. But this one here, the nut came right off. So, uh, this snap ring goes in between in the groove to space the bearings out. As you can see, there's a snap ring in there, I think. Yeah, the crows over there are starting to drive me crazy. Cackling and shit all the time. Or is there a snap ring in there? Well, I don't know, there's a snap ring in the box, but there's no snap ring in there that I can see. I mean, here's a breakdown of the parts that go in it. Yeah, I mean, they're showing... Yeah, they're not showing no snap ring in there. I've actually got a service manual. Actual cert, that's just the operator's manual there. Let's look on the service manual, huh? God dang it, come on, wake up. Um. Yeah, there's no shaft bearing assembly it says bearing assembly roller tongue wa tongue to washer so anyway I don't see what's the deal with the snap ring they sent there's the tongue to washer now this snap ring came out of there when it all popped loose I don't know what we got going on here But there is, they got this big snap ring here. I don't see any snap ring. You know? I think there is a snap ring in there actually. I really think there's one in there. I haven't ever done one of these before. The one, I mean, I've done plunger bearings on these, but they're already set up on the shaft and everything, and you just stick them in there and go. Yeah, you're annoying. 
swing, you son of a bitch. I'm fixing to go get my gun out of my truck here and shoot your ass. I'm tired of listening to you. Okay, so how do we get it down in there? that maybe Obviously, the tapers are going like that. Dirt on my hammer, because there's dirt on my bumper. Not very conducive to a good bearing. Wonderful. Break clean. As a field mechanic, maybe we'll set a rag down, help kind of keep things from getting all screwed up. Here's just in better days, so they may not work too good. Up against the snap ring yet? Nope, not yet. Still not down against it yet. You'll see a little bit of a gap there. Mm 
Man, these are kind of a pain in the ass, you know what? Yeah, they're just really not too much fun. Okay, that's one bearing in. Or one racing, I guess. Cup. It's a cup. Yeah, too much bounce in this bumper. Way too much bounce in that bumper. Put it on the anvil. Way better, way better. Yes, that is a lot better. 1,000%. Fighting that damn bumper. Bouncing on me every time I hit it and taking all my power away. Grind this punch off flat, probably. You know what? Let's see what happens here, huh? Hold it. I wonder if I can squeeze it in the vise. Hold it, son of a bitch. Probably, probably not. We'll try it. all the way down this other one Let's see if I can go just a little bit more of it Those aren't the funnest things to deal with, to say the least. Yeah. Okay. So, got to pack these by hand. The new bearings by hand. Let me go get some wheel bearing grease. It'd be the best. This must be the seal that goes over the end of it, I'm guessing. Out here. Like so. Does the seal go here? Because they're not showing that on the picture here anywhere. What do we got here? Okay, so obviously the seal, there's the rubber seal right there. You can see it on the inside of Yeah, there's the rubber seal. So the rubber seal. The 
grease cup's obviously going to go in the recess over here. And the rubber seal will seat up right here on this side. Okay, that makes sense now. We'll get some wheel bearing grease in the back of these. Okay, so I got, got my little foot in there to pick up on the back of the plunger to get it centered. And got it on there, so now we're going to, well, let's just kind of cinch it up with the rack and the socket. And I got to go to 100, 160 foot pounds. Let me just take this. You'll notice on these big bailers, they always change those front ones because those are the easy ones to get to. The back ones, they don't ever change. And 60 foot pounds. Let me get a my torque wrench out. I know you can't see it, but I just torqued it. Uh, now I gotta stake it. Find the stake hole. It's kind of not in the most convenient location, I'll tell you that. Maybe a chisel, a long one. They didn't make that the most convenient thing to deal with right there. I might have to move the plunger back where I can get on that. I don't know if I can get in through here maybe. Now we got her. Found. 
start in there for some reason. Huh. I've had to tweak these things before to get them to go. Because they went round. What the fuck's my fucking hammer at? plunger back a ways and so the bitch is going to hang on Okay, so I pretty well got the plunger bearings done. Now we've got all those nuts off from the bottom. They're plow bolts, so I got one that's spinning on me. I'm gonna slay the sledgehammer on it, see if it'll hold it. Ugh. these up maybe here Thank <laughs> you. 
knee pads in my pants, but they still bother me a little bit. or something and then get the bolts off of it. Take a real closer look at that one. And then I need to see what's going on there. Well, what I gotta do is I gotta get the plow bolts to pop through so I can... These are welded on. See what's going on. I know this one here. I had one bolt that was fighting me, not wanting to stay still. I think It'd be this one right here. I don't know if I can, you know what? Maybe I can wedge it. Like this. underneath there and see if we can spin it off. I must have forgot. <sighs> like our modern day society and like things up my ass it's I have an exit sign only tattooed on my butt cheeks Yeah, I didn't I didn't pull the nuts off of it, so that would probably probably help if I did that. Let's get this one that I got wedged here. Forgot to get. Oh gosh. I'll have to clean. 
climb back in there again and wedge that one. Sometimes you can. That's just not gonna do it though. Gets me in a pain. Street. <sighs> oh, come on, son of a bitch. Let me go get a three inch extension. <sighs> Shit, all in my eyes. Wonderful. child here. Yep. I have to up there and wedge that son of a bitch and get it off.
Alright, well, get the new ones, start putting them in. Oh yeah, dumbass. <laughs> ah, you dumb bastard, yeah. That would probably make a difference. Why are they not lining up though? Why are the holes not lining up? What are we doing wrong here? What the hell's going on here? How are the holes not lining up? The holes aren't lining up. And they do not line up. What the hell, huh? Let's take one of these out and look at one of the old ones because these don't line up. They're too far apart. These are lining up with these. These are spread too far. It's like they got me the wrong ones or something. And I got these part numbers right out of the right out of the parts book for this baler. Or did I just did I just get one that was picked up? Well, you know what? I bet. Oh, I bet those outside ones have wider. Yep, those outside ones have wider, wider holes on them. Yep. Okay. Well, it's gonna be pissed for a second, but it's operator error. So easy to do here. I'd have to jump a hit or something up in here. Something up in here is holding it up. Beat it over with a hammer, get it in there, so it's pretty close. Now that I got my head unplanted from my ass and know what I'm doing.
hammer time. Get the front ones in, maybe. That's nice. That one's on the ground now. Just sucks because it's an extra trip that you didn't really want to make. Especially when you get old, you don't like making them extra trips all the time. Gosh dang it man, this one's opened up already, so we're falling out of the sack. I'm gonna be short. I ordered There's seven of these, huh? Two that fell on the ground would be just right. All right, guys, let me go climb down there and get them. Ah, zip the nuts on them. I got new nuts. Then I got to put the wear plates back over the end of the plunger there and adjust the side clearance on them. And then I think, I think it'll be ready to bail. I might, I don't know, these here need to be cut off. The new one's welded on there. See how they're cracking along there, but maybe we can get through the season with it here. And that needs to be addressed this thing's had a lot of bells through here man well guys i think pretty well almost got this thing to where maybe it'll bell some hay uh i like these 2170s 2270 massies way better than those 
I'm not a big fan of New Holland balers. The last good baler that New Holland made was like a 515 New Holland or a 505. They went to the men lines with the 585s and the BB900s and everybody that could do it went to like a, uh, what are those, 4690 Heston small balers. Way better. About half as many moving parts on them as the New Hollands and just way better balers. And these are kind of the same way, these Masseys here, which are Heston's basically. Uh, let's get in here. And I gotta put these side plates on, but I wanted to get my light and look the rest of the baler over. But these turned out pretty good here, so that's what we want. Yeah, it looks good. I got, I had to take a plate and stick on the top of the bolts there so I could so I could get the pile bolts to hold down in there to where I could tighten the nuts up and start them from the bottom anyways yeah that's way better way better I can't believe the thickness difference on these hay dogs those other ones were just razor thin and just rounded off you know these look way way better so yeah Let's flip the rest of the baler over while we got the video going. Let's see if there's anything that I'm missing here. Look at the stuffer chamber there and the stuffer arm. He said he greased them, man. I I was using them. <laughs> Hang on a sec. I gotta get up off this. But I I was taking these plates and and there was one bolt that was stuck in it so i went over here on the tire and i just just kind of just popped it on the tire a little bit and that son of a bitch that son of a bitch hit me right there right there and look in that mirror here holy shit oh yeah yeah it got me good lucky son of a bitch didn't hit my eyeball <laughs> probably wasn't the smartest thing i've ever done looked like he greased all that stuff so that's good. See fresh grease on that bearing over there. But I think one of these I was looking at, I think it's on that other side, looks pretty thin. I might get one of those coming. Yeah, this one here looks, I don't know got a dent in it or something there maybe it's all right i'm just seeing that dent there this is your stuffer arm here let's look at the main crank arms on it he greased those he greased those real good so let's put a hydraulic pump in the steering gear box and it's probably a good idea to slip the and then I think a guy can you know they tell you to to slip these clutches what happens the rust gets on them and what you can do is start the baler and just put it at a idle there and kick the pto on then just get out and grab the brake and and just pull the brake on it and slip that clutch just to, it's called burnishing the clutches is what it is so it's probably a good idea to do that because what happens is these clutches will rust on you setting all winter and then it won't release it won't slip the rust will hold it together and then it'll just tear the living shit out of everything when something when the you know it, it won't slip and then it'll just tear everything up it'll tear the drive lines out of it or tear the gearbox up in the baler or, you know so other than that she's full of hydraulic fluid Let's look at our uh, Let's see if the chains are loose or need to be tightened or what. Is that monkey greasing? Any grease search in here? I don't 
think there's any grease ricks in here that I can see anyway. The chains look good and they're tight. Let's look at the other side. And this one here I think will she'll bail again. Notice one of these. This one's working. One of those the rollers are all froze up on it. The bearings are stuck in or something. Holy shit, I can't I can't get that one loose. Get a pair of pliers, I guess. But anyway, how about our pickup tines here on the pickup? Has it got a bunch of missing or anything? Those all look intact. How about our augers? Augers look all right. The old girl really ain't in too bad a shape. She's actually in pretty decent shape. I'm missing one tine here. That one's busted. Usually I don't worry too much about one missing. If I get a couple in a row or three in a row missing, I'll change them out. There's that bearing that flew off I couldn't find when I pulled that apart. But anyway, I think she'll... I'll check this one side on the pickup. Other than that, I think she's pretty well ready to go. I think she'll bail some hay. And then I can get this other one in here and start cleaning it out, I guess. I'm going to make them clean it out. They can clean their baler out. Uh, you know, we could get up here and look at our nodders. I know they were using this one last fall and it bailed just fine. There was nothing wrong with it. Hold on a second. bill hooks worn or anything like that. This bill hook is fairly new here. I think I changed one of these last year. Yeah. Another thing I can look at on these is these bearings. These twine holders, these bearings here will go out. You gotta watch them. <laughs> and the bottom ones too. I cut the string on this one because I couldn't get in there to get that. I was trying to get that shaft out. these these down here too will go bad on a guy and cause you some grief these bearings right here will I don't know why that one's so much further down and what's going on to that I didn't cut that one I guess it don't really matter too much, but my bearings look good there, so anyway. Oh well Saturday evening. I've been just working my tail off here lately. I'm just tired. I, I feel better now that this one's this one will bail. And then Monday or Tuesday we'll start tearing that new Holland baler down. And fix all that wonderful stuff. So anyways. Upwards and onwards guys.